Thank you everyone for tuning in. We're VPK by Maharshi Ayurveda. I'm Valerie Brown, and this is our Creating Balance and Loving Relationships with Ayurveda webinar. Part of living a life of wellness is in enjoying healthy relationships, whether that's with yourself, your loved ones, your friends, or people that you meet. So how does the practice of Ayurveda help us build healthy relationships? To share insights on this topic, we're joined by two Ayurvedic experts today. Dr. Mark Toomey, he's the director of Maharshi Ayurveda at the Raj Ayurvedic Health Spa, and he offers consultations and oversees the Panchakarma program. And Dr. Toomey's partner, Helen Toomey, better known as Auntie Helen, a Maharshi Ayurveda wellness consultant and certified transcendental meditation teacher. We're grateful to have both of, both of you here today to shed some light on this important topic. Thank you. Welcome. We're, you, we're, we feel really honored. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Let's get into the topic. I'm, I am so excited to hear what the two of you have to say. Good. So let's start with relationships. Uh, Ayurveda is all about relationships, and I find that very much so in my practice. The word Ayurveda implies a relationship. First, you have Ayu and Veda together as a word. And when in Sanskrit, when those two syllables come together, Ayur, which means lifespan or life in general, which of course encompasses everything, and Veda, which means pure knowledge, when they come together, it implies there's a relationship between the two that there is this constant relationship between ourselves and our life and that which governs all of the universe. So Ayurveda, we would say, is a body of knowledge, a body of information that allows you to maintain this intimate relationship with the cosmos, let's say. So just in the word itself, we've seen that there's a relationship. Now, the word itself, uh, Ayu, it has a specific definition in Ayurveda, which also implies relationships. Ayur or life or lifespan involves, of course, many things. And the Ayurvedic texts say that the definition of life is a togetherness, a sam yoga, or a balanced relationship between our body, our senses, our mind, and our atma, our pure consciousness, our own individual pure consciousness. There's this balanced relationship between all of those things that allow us to have a life. And so Ayurveda, again, is about maintaining the strength of those relationships, the body, the mind, the senses, and our pure self. And that is a very important part of what we'll talk about today. We can talk about doshas in one sense and how they affect our different personalities, but ultimately it's about these layers of relationships that make up our life. Vedic knowledge in general, whether it be the knowledge of architecture or music, is all about maintaining the interconnectedness of everything. And without that interconnectedness, then mistakes and problems start to arise. So maintaining that interconnection is very important in terms of any relationship, whether it be with ourself, with our partners, with our family, our friends, our nation, with our universe, with everybody. It's about maintaining that interconnectedness, that communication, that frictionless flow of knowledge. And that we don't want problems to arise. We want to have a balanced life. So in terms of relationship, there is also, uh, it's also about balance. A relationship, health itself in Ayurveda is the word swasta. Swasta means to be standing in Swa. Swa means pure consciousness. Sta means to be stable, to be established. And there's a really specific definition of that. And that's one of the reasons I was drawn to Ayurveda was because it actually has this really specific definition of what health is. And let me go over the Sanskrit first. It says, Sama dosha, Sama gnishcha, Sama datu malakriya, prasana mendriya manaha, Swasta iti abhidiyate. And that means there's this balanced relationship, this balance in our agni, our, our, our doshas, our digestion, the formation of all our tissues, balanced elimination or the elimination of toxins, and that our mind and our senses are full of bliss. 
That is the signs and symptoms that we look for in a healthy person. So that's the knowledge of Ayurveda, how we maintain these interrelationships, how we maintain this connectedness between all the parts of our body and the relationships with our partners and our family and our environment, near and far. And in that interconnectedness, then we, we have less problems, less mistake, and we experience more of the bliss of life, the happiness of life. Helen, now I mentioned doshas, I brought doshas up, and that's also a very important part in understanding who we are, how Ayurveda can contribute on a very simple level about, let's say, a relationship between two people, because that's often what we think of with the relationship. We, many people might be here today just thinking, well, I'd just like to get on better with people. And that will really help, helping us understand on certain levels. So from a mental level, from the mind, the mind is all about knowledge and understanding. So there's one level of knowledge, which is, has to do with how we can apply knowledge and understanding about the world around us to bring back some happiness or balance to our life. And then there's the heart level, the feeling level. And that's very important that you have both of these the mind and the heart functioning in a balanced way to promote knowledge and understanding and balance to the feeling level of any relationship. And Ayurveda is a very, very beautiful way to do that. And we'll talk a lot about that later on when it comes to, let's say, individual relationships. So we talked about doshas. And right now, Helen would like to give a little more information about doshas themselves and how we apply that to understanding uh, other people, ourselves, and the world around us and how we can affect some balance in that region. Thank you, Mark. I know that we have many very devoted Maharishi Ayurved um, uh, devotees, should I say, to these wonderful webcams and, and broadcasts. But again, I'll just repeat that doshas, a, um, a description of doshas, Doshas are the fundamental principles of the laws of nature which govern all structure and all function in our physiology, in our neurophysiology, and in the universe. So these remarkable fundamental laws of nature, they can give us these tremendous insights going far beyond the inevitable uh, information that we hear about, about males and females being differently wired. That's a very Western expression, you know, in the brain and hormonally and all the rest. This is far more strategic, far more fundamentally, uh, fundamental and powerful. So the three doshas are vata, pitta and kapha. And the vata principle, briefly, is responsible for all transportation of information and intelligence. And it governs all thinking and speaking. It governs the mind, the nervous system, everything that moves in the physiology, circulation, respiration, elimination, etc. Now, a key point of Vata Dosha is its elements. This gives us the insight. It's the lightest of the five elements or building blocks. It's air and space. So I'd like everyone to think about this as the spacey principle. Now, next we have Pitta. Pitta is the fiery principle. The elements are fire and water. And Pitta governs everything transformation, digestion, metabolism. I eat something that transformed into me. Any chemical reaction in our physiology and the universe, it also governs intellect. So it's a fiery principle. And then third, we have the heaviest of the doshas. This is kapha dosha. And kapha dosha, the basic elements there are earth and water. So what does it govern? It governs all structure, lubrication, growth, fluid levels in our physiology. All right, now let's look a little bit deeper. What I'm going to do now is, is this. I'm giving, going to give an example. We're going to follow the Vata trail. We're going to uh, give a description of what we're going to describe as a Vata predominant person. Now, for those that know uh, a lot about Ayurveda, there are actually 10 possible combinations that we've got. 
or prakriti. What's your prakriti? That's your underlying nature or your mind body type. Maybe other people know the word as your psychophysiology, whatever it is. But there are 10 possibilities for simplicity and so people can more readily, um, shall we say, align themselves or it will resonate more clearly. We're going to say someone that's vata predominant. Now, a person that's vata predominant, they, when they're in balance, what we'll see is a person that has a slimmer physiology, finer bone structure, a person that is by nature bubbly, creative, talkative, quick to think, quick to speak, quick to do everything, so quick to do everything that sometimes they may even forget to do the basics like eat lunch or go to bed or, or whatever. And these people in balance uh, can have a good digestion, they can have good sleep, they can have a uh, good elimination. But just the same way that we see that the basic energy and um, uh, you know, the fundamentals of this particular mind body type person, individual, is movement and energy and all the rest, how they can create an imbalance by doing too much and not resting enough and how and, and not eating regularly, etc., not keeping warm, no regularity in their routine. Why? Because the qualities of vata are cold, rough, dry, quick, irregular and moving. So if they're not having regular routine, regular sleep, keeping warm, warm grounding foods, etc., this is what the Ayurvedic texts will say. This is so insightful. This will give you an idea for your own life, your, your own personality, and also for your loved ones. So this would translate, if you are out of balance, that immediately we would have psychologically more tendency towards fear, worry, and anxiety. And then physiologically, we would have more tendency to possibly lose weight. There could be constipation. There could be irregular appetite and real difficulty, especially in, forming, in, in falling asleep easily, i.e. insomnia. Now, when I'm going to now give some simple recommendations of how to put that individual back into balance, because this is a lot of information, I want us to think of these really simple points. Calm, gro calming, grounding, nourishing. If you remember nothing else, calming, grounding, nourishing. How do we do this? Regular everything. Going to bed at a good regular time, what we call good sleep hygiene. In bed by no later than 10. Up in the morning, ideally around six or whatever regular meals. It's very important for vata predominant people, especially if they're out of balance, but really all the time, to keep rested. Regular meals. Absolutely, if you have stimulants in the way of teas and coffees, etc., then nothing after 11. Ideally better none, but let's be realistic. So as we've said, warm foods, keep warm, regular routine, regular sleep, regular exercise, but the more gentle exercises. I don't want you racing off doing 20K runs when you've got a vata imbalance. So these are just a few of the insights. All right, so this could already help you say, oh my dear, my partner's always anxious and worried and fearful, or I am and it drives my partner mad or it's driving me mad, whatever that is. This is a result of an imbalance. Have more love for yourself and have more patience and love for your family members or your significant other. This isn't them, it's an imbalance. It brings more empathy, it brings more empathy. The pitta, so a pitta predominant person, oh, you'll know them, you'll know them. We've got two here, more B, medium uh, bone structure and physiology. They really like doing exercise. There are people that likes to get the job done. They're people that don't like to waste time. Good energy level uh, and at the same time focused, good level of ambition, strong intellect, can do, will do, let's do it now type of personality. 
And of course, it's a fiery principle, so they're passionate. We love that to be passionate about somebody. And in general, they also, good sleep, strong digestion, strong digestion, strong appetite, good sleep, etc. Now, if they're going to do the same things as the qualities of Pitta, which are hot, intense, sour and dynamic, and they're going to do those things in excess, i.e. they're not going to have any nourishing rest time, they're not going to have, uh, they're having too much in the way of spicy food, sour food, uh, they're having not enough rest, not enough fun time, if they're working too hard, too much, with Vada it's more than mental focus, with Pitta it's anything to do with time, anything to do with too many time uh, deadlines, which will, can really create that. They're overheated, they're not keeping themselves cool, forcing themselves, they lose their sense of humour. And, uh, and this again, uh, the, this can create what? It can create uh, too much intensity. It can create them, they'll lose their sense of humour, perhaps frustration, perhaps anger, perhaps uh, they become hangry if they're not eating regularly. And uh, sleep will be interrupted, usually waking up during the night unable to sleep. There could be more things like ulcers, or there could be things like acidity, or, uh, rashes, feeling overheated feeling overwhelmed, out of sorts, cranky, hot under the collar. So what do we do? We do the opposite of the qualities. In a nutshell, cooling, soothing, calming, nourishing. So we have foods that are going to be cooling. We have a good routine. We have fun time, fun time, walking in nature keeping physically cool, also time out, obviously, to be doing our transcendental meditation daily and the good routine that we need and exercise. Not pushing oneself and believing that by doing more, we're going to achieve more. There comes a time when a pitta individual loses their sense of humour, they become perfectionist, they start pushing and they start to have what I call the blame game then that's when things become very, very tense for themselves and the relationships. And you could be perceiving this in others. So again, look after yourself, the cooling, all those things for yourself and also your family. And then next we have kapha. Kapha, as we remember, is the heaviest of the doshas. So again, so many royal features, a bigger physiology, a stronger physiology, bigger bone structure. And when they're in balance, they're, they're loyal. I think they've got a royal quality to them. They're also a very, very big heart, very, very compassionate, and bravery there, steadfast, resilient. When all the rest of the world is in a maelstrom and there's a hurricane blowing, the kapha balanced person is there as a prime example of balance and joy. And we all wish that we all had a little bit more kapha or balanced kapha in all of us. Strong physiology, uh, etc. They're just some of the uh, of the characteristics. Good sleep, a little bit more sluggish in the way of digestion and and all the rest. So, what will throw them out of balance, and what will that look alike? Because the qualities of kapha are, it's heavy and unctuous, or oily and sweet, and stable, and steady, and non-moving. All those qualities are so important. But at the same time, if a kapha person having the physiology starts to eat too many heavy foods, oily foods, sweet foods, unctuous foods, is overeating, isn't getting enough exercise, isn't getting enough mental stimulation, physical, and all the rest, then there's going to be weight gain, they're going to be feeling sluggish, they could even have uh, things such as fluid retention, and psychologically, they're going to be feeling heavy, heavy emotion, heavy dosha, heavy imbalance. So psychologically, it's like they can't get off the couch, they feel stuck, they can't move, and also, they could not only retain weight and fluid, they could also retain grudges. 
something rather like that, something that someone's done, they can't quite digest. What do we do? We do something that we do, we give them more in the way of stimulation. Stimulation in the way of food and spices, lighter foods, more foods that more flavour. Um, to go to go into all the detail, we can go into the Mappy website because there are so many foodstuffs there that was going to really give us the full picture. But again, a lighter, nourishing food. They maybe not need three meals a day, but certainly no snacking in between. So more in the way of stimulation, more exercise, really robust exercise, according to whatever your doctor thinks. And stimulation, whatever you do, don't stay in the house. Go out and be with people. Go out and be with people to get out of that stuck mood. And most importantly, a general point now, this is general for everyone, is the fact, even though I've just mentioned TM for the pitta, for time's sake, if Mark and I would say, what are the general points for everyone, for your own life to bring balance or for others? This is so important. It's number one is learning transcendental meditation. Why? Because Maharishi Ayurveda, as my husband has beautifully described, is a consciousness-based. It's a relationship between everything. It's a relationship between consciousness and having that direct experience every day when we transcend. And transcendental meditation is the most extensively researched, what broadly prescribed and widely practiced self-development technique in the world today for the prevention of ill health and the promotion of wellness. And at the same time, greater clarity, neutralization of all those deeply rooted stresses and fatigues, clarity, full mental potential, and development of a more balanced and loving heart. This is number one. This is what everybody should be encouraged to do. Life is as we are, Mahashi said. Life is as we perceive it. And this will be continued in our rest of our conversation this morning, uh, this evening, I should say. Life is as we are. Life is as we perceive it. What is the state of our connectedness? So that is number one. Secondly, is not only respecting ourselves, because in that first point, we also understand that ultimately, whether it's from the Greek tradition or the Asian tradition, know thyself. So knowing thyself is not any respect for thyself, but also respect for what? Number two, daily routine. Understanding that your nature and nature's nature is one, meaning that we developed as a species, we're a diurnal species, we're meant to be active during the day and wind down at night, and therefore, we understand having respect for a good daily routine and going to bed in a timely way, waking up in the morning in a timely way, regular meals, regular exercise. We don't just think because we have technology and we can be up 24-7, all right, that's what we do. There's a blurring of day and night. My husband and I, at the Raj and everywhere else that I do seminars and workshops and all the rest, we see this all the time. People have so many imbalances psychologically and physiologically because they don't respect nature, which is their nature. Number three, things like regular meals, nourishing meals, organic meals. We are what we eat. With good food, there is no, as we understand, most importantly, food is medicine. And therefore, we understand this is to nourish ourselves. To have daily exercise is absolutely important for our mind and body to nourish ourselves. And then obviously we understand that it's very, very important for us to have fun. That's the purpose of life. So if, again, you're, we really need to be remembering that and not overcome by so many responsibilities in life. We need to have some fun time, or as I call, vitamin F. So these are a few of the principles. And again, a very charming quote from Oscar Wilde, and that is, learning to love yourself is the beginning of a lifelong romance. This really is the relationship. We can't mention it again. If you want to change yourself, 
then it begins, change begins within. And this is the basis for all the loving and balanced relationships that you're going to have with your significant other, your family and your friends and life. And you will change your perception and your appreciation of all your surroundings and yourself. It all starts here, developing yourself and consciousness, moving towards balanced health. Wonderful. Now, with all of that information about the doshas individually and seeing ourselves within those, how do we see relationships within those doshas as well with other people or, you know, how do, how do we handle a relationship with somebody who's really kapha or somebody who's really pitta or somebody who's really vata? That's a very good question, Val. <laughs> let's, let's bring an example um, from, your of, practice? from people I have seen in my practice. And I always say I love to see couples together. And one of the reasons I love to see couples together is because I always joke with them, nobody gets away with anything. <laughs> often when you see people by themselves, they often don't reveal what, how other people see them. Basically, they see them as themselves. But when you get a couple, you get a second opinion about, let's say, what that person tends to do, which is not so good for their health or what they see may be a beginning or a health problem. And so it's a lovely perspective to get those two opinions. And it does go both ways. It's not just one way. Uh, it's both ways that we get those opinions. So I'll give you an example. I had a couple uh, a few weeks ago, and it's a good example based on what Helen was talking about. So we had a man lovely man, very, very sweet. And he was very pitta though. He would say by nature, he's more pitta. And then he had a lovely wife who they adored each other, but she was more vata. And that meant that her main concerns. And when I talked to her and felt her pulse, there was a lot of vata there. So when that imbalance of vata starts, as Helen said, there's too much movement. Vata is the airy and spacey principle. So a little bit more spaciness, it tends to worry and get anxious. So worry about a husband, worry about his health, mm -hmm. you know, do things too quickly or sometimes to forget things. Now, for a pitta person, this her husband was a real classic pitta. You know, take his pulse. There's a bit of heat there, very sharp, but a real good businessman. His main focus was business. His passion was business, making money. And he would go about it very well. He would work long hours uh, because they're very dedicated. And so we have this wife who tends to sit at home by herself because her husband in his drive and nature is out making money and she's worrying all the time. And then he's at, at work under stress and putting pressure on himself because that's tend what Peter do. They're perfectionists and getting angry at people and getting angry at her because of that vada. She'd come home and she would try to talk to him and try and soothe him and tell him all these different things. But he was like, you know, he comes home exhausted because he's been out powering all day. He wants to do something else. And often better people like to go and do things that relieve tension. Like they might have their cocktail in the evening, drink some wine, right? Make a martini is very common, which is really not good for Peter because, as we know, alcohol is fire water and tends to increase heat and is very, not very good for sleep. It tends to dehydrate the brain at night. Yeah. Or they go and watch a movie, chill out, watch a movie, or play a game, you know, on a computer, just something to get away from business. And they were asking me how, from an Ayurvedic perspective, how I can help them not just individually, but as a couple, because it was a strain between the two of them. And so the first thing, of course, with the husband was to pacify Pitta, you know, make sure that he had regular meals, because as I said, in the passionate nature of Pitta, they push and they push, and sometimes they tend to forget also to have meals. But then, of course, by the time they would get to their meal, they were ravenous and they would overeat, which is the worst thing for digestion. Or they would come home late at night and, and, and snack and eat late at night, which, again, 
is the worst thing for digestion. So it's all about giving that knowledge about the right time to eat, as Helen said, the right foods to eat, things that are more cooling and, and nourishing, and uh, to get some good rest, you know, to try and cool down that passionate nature of pizza. You know, I don't want to take away from the creativity of a pitta because, or the energy of a pitta, but it's how you direct that, that energy. And energy has to be taken and directed back in a relationship to the other person. You know, you can't have a relationship with someone else if all the energy is going to your work. I think a lot of people would agree with that. And so, of course, Absolutely. Vata people tend to need more nourishment. They're the ones you need to hug more the ones you need to spend time with. And I'm not saying Vardas are needy. You know, they're actually very practical people. They go out and do things. But just based on this relationship, my advice was to calm the pitta down, to cool the pitta down, to nourish the pitta, give him some really good advice about, A, relieving stress. You know, learning to meditate, learning to do TM is a bit like fitting a safety valve on a pressure cooker. Let's say a pressure cooker without a safety valve, what happens is the pressure and the heat builds up. And explodes. And then what happens is it comes out as an anger or high blood pressure or problems with, uh, you know, heat in general in the body, inflammation in general. And so when you learn to meditate, you will learn to relieve that pressure very easily. And then, of course, also uh, go to bed on time, as Helen said, sleep is nectar for fitter people because they're always using so much energy. And having more fun, you know, is so much important for Peter, that passion, that drive. They really have to have more, more fun. You'll often find that people who have more Peter are actually very creative artistically. And so sometimes people expressing in business that passion are forgetting about that creative side of themselves. And you also always find there's a hidden artist there somewhere that's very frustrated. They always love art, but their, their desire to do that, they don't have time to do music or to draw or to paint. But if you give them some time to do that and give them direction that that's what they should be doing more of as well, together with their partner, then you'll find that that is more balancing for their heart. And if, so for getting him back in order is one thing, and that is good. People tend to take on that advice very quickly. And then, of course, for her, it's about nourishing and calming and pacifying. And so nice daily oil massage every day is basically like giving yourself a warm, oily hug. And that really is soothing, not just for the skin and the muscles and the joints, but it just it helps soothe smooth the whole day, it takes away dryness. It pacifies the nervous system. Drinking warm Vita tea, you know, focusing on things that are, that are nourishing for that person. What are their goals in life as well? Not just sitting worrying about a husband. So, right, we're taking care of the husband now, but what about the vata, balancing that vata? Um, vata tea, worry-free tea, vata aroma oils. And then, of course, with couples, being together, you know, spending that time together. There's a beautiful saying from, uh, from the Upanishads, that goes saha navavatu, saha nabunatu, sa viriyam karavavahai, te jasvi nav aditam astu, ma vidvishavahai. And what that translates as is it, it's, it's called a peace mantra, but in general it can be applied to any relationship. And it means first let's be together. In our endeavors in life, let's do it together. So if you're just a wife at home, then you will support your husband in his endeavors as best you can and vice versa. Let us nourish together and not just what the food that we eat, as Helen said, food is very important to create balance for doshas, but less nourishing each other on this path, this journey we have in life on the level of the heart and the mind, as well as the food we eat. And let's do that with strength and courage. And let's, as we do that, radiate the light of life. And never, ever entertain negativity on that path. Negativity is the barrier to any relationship, whether it be with yourself, with your partner. And in order to do that, we have to have this balance between heart and mind. And, you know, I can't give people that. We all have to work on that ourselves. So I said, in any relationship, it's about 
the mind is involved in terms of knowledge and understanding in terms of who that person is and that's what we're giving you today some knowledge of that and then of course the fine feeling level of the heart is always involved with relationships you know if you're bruce springsteen you write songs called everybody has a hungry heart if <laughs> my wife's favorite song from the 80s my achy breaky heart <laughs> is it <laughs> so <laughs> Really? So Maybe we know yours. from music and, and, and poetry that there's a lot that has to do with our heart, but the heart more than is not just a pump. In Ayurveda, we have this sadak pitta. It's one of the aspects of pitta. And sadak has to do how we digest and processes our, our emotions in life. And to understand emotions is very complicated. You know, if you line up 10 neuroscientists and you ask them each, what is an emotion? You get 10 different answers. It's so complex. But one of the best answers I heard was from a neuroscientist named Joseph Ledoux. And he said that emotions involve many hierarchical layers within our physiology um, of action, such it, it takes in, of course, our nervous system, our cardiovascular system, our hormonal system, and our immune system. All these things functioning together help us come together with a, an emotion. And of course, now we know that the bacteria in our gut also affect our mood in certain ways. We have molecules in our nervous system that are connected to our brain, basically, when we think. So emotions affect everything. And creating a balanced emotion or, or a strong emotional heart is a very important part of that process. So that has a lot to do with how we think. You know, someone who has a narrow vision of life, creates obstacles in the path of their emotional life and with their relationships. But learning to transcend or to meditate, do TM every day, creates an expanded mind. One that, as we say, is not like a frog in a well who has this very limited vision, but more an expanded vision of their self in the universe. And that is actually a physical experience. So their hearts tend to open up. And with that expanded view of life, that there's the essence of life. Most you say the essence of human life is a loving heart. That's beautiful. And then there's a quote from Rumi says, if, if, if you don't cure that which is blocking your experience of love, if we, we don't really need to seek love, what we need to do is look at what's blocking the path of that love. And so that, as we said, comes from this very, narrow view of life if if we're like that pit of man who's just all he wants to do is make money we have to expand our vision of life and that's the value of this vedic knowledge it's about being able to connect to everything have this more expanded view of our heart and mind so that we have this flexibility and tolerance and patience and joy all the time and that we can give more you know giving is the important part of any relationship if two people come together to receive, you know, there's nothing there. To, it's all about giving. And we have to have that well of giving always there in and a that, relationship. And, and that happens when we're in balance. Mm -hmm. And that happens when we have the experience of wellness. We have the experience of that inner silence. We have that experience of, of more balance, you know, more balance in life. It's just not on the thinking level. It's that direct experience and then we radiate and it changes the environment. We all know when we're exhausted and tense, that's the environment that we're creating. And this isn't about blame because I'll, I'll give you a short example of something very funny that happened the other night when I was doing a talk at the Raj and everyone in the room, there were eight people and they were all pitta predominant, myself included. And we all were talking about relationships and some of them were saying, well, in life, I've, I've always, the, the opposite, I think, attracts. This is another aspect of this, because as we know, opposites can attract. So perhaps a Vata person who has that tendency to be active, but a tendency maybe to worry and be fearful or anxious, if that person is with a, a, a balanced kapha person, that can be so nourishing because that person's more stable and, 
and, and, and, and doesn't have that tendency, is, is much more steady and at the same time uh, likely to not be ruffled and then uh, and nor aggravated by that state and vice versa. So we all discuss the fact that yes, opposites do attract. And what we do is, is this, is the fact that if this is in a significant relation, a relationship with someone, you know, that perhaps you're marry or significant relationship or whatever, then in, in that, what's happening is the fact that we're not trying to change someone. You know, I've had said to me many times <coughs> by people that are very candid, it's a shame that sometimes people marry and they don't want their partner to change because they love everything about them. And others marry and think, yes, well, that person's got potential when I change them, yes? And I'm not going to assign that to a different sex because that would be sexist. And, you know, in this day and age, everyone has a different, um, how can we pull it, a, a, a different gender identity. There are many genders, so we need to be respectful. But whatever it is in life, whether we're opposites attract or we're attracted to someone of the same dosha, the value is the wholeness. We don't try and change someone else. We don't blame someone else. And that's what with our joke amongst the eight pitta people in this conversation. They said, yes, when we're out of balance, we'll go, it's all your fault. Whether it's to our child or our partner or our sister or whatever, it's your fault. This is your fault. And then after they learn a little bit more about Ayurveda, they understand that in their blame, they're revealing their own imbalance. The buck stops here. This we do first. We balance this. I think it would be such an exciting idea if people could, could encourage their friends and family and loved ones to go on the MAPI website and do the dosha test. Make it fun. Don't nag. You'll never, ever change loved ones, and you shouldn't change. Encourage and support when you gain benefit from this wonderful website, Mappy, which we just adore, and so many people appreciate, when we get this balance, we should share this also in social media and in our discussions and professions for more peace in the world and balance and health and happiness, which everything seems to be at loggerheads. So why don't we encourage our friend and family and loved ones and even our workers to go on and do the dosha test or to do this as a game, or to do this as, as something with our friends and family. Make it fun. Give these points. This isn't trying to fix anyone. This is giving them an opportunity to really know about the fundamental, the fundamental of the fabulous, unique, special, divine individuals that we all are. It's never about fixing or about blame. Not good. And I loved that word that Dr. Toomey brought into toler tolerance. That's a wonderful word as well. The, yes. We all want to be more compassionate, loving, uplifting, tolerant. We want to be supportive. We want to be patient. Those things are fine, but at the same time, we want them to happen spontaneously not to remind ourselves, and that only happens when we're in more balance and we can encourage our friends and family to recognise how these doshas and life in general, that's what's happening. It's not that something's wrong. It's just that we're expressing our imbalance rather than our balance. Mm -hmm. Sorry for all the talking. Val. <laughs> well, uh, a lot of our audience, they, they tune in for many of these webinars and we have worked with the two of you a handful of times now. I always love getting on camera with you too because you have such a dynamic energy between the two of you. Maybe that's that pizza that you were talking about. But I would really love to know, and hopefully our audience can resonate with this too. What is, how, how do the two of you do it? What's your top tip for sustaining your dynamic, loving, lasting relationship? You first, Blossom. <laughs> I could say having a very good sense of humour is one of them. <laughs> you know, it comes back to that 
saying that I talked about. It's it's recognizing that we're on this path together, because we you know love is always there. We have love for everything. You know, it can be individualized as a mother for love for a child, husband's love for wife, and vice versa is more concentrated. But it's the love that you share with other people as well, and the love that you have for doing things. You know, we doing things together is is a very good way to to maintain a good relationship you know we love to walk and exercise together we love the water we love walking in nature you know just spending time together and eating together preparing meals together nourishing each other and it's not so much trying to fix the other person but giving them subtle gentle advice about you know maybe you know you shouldn't stay up so late or you should go to bed Very good those effect. type of things and the types of food that you eat gentle advice it's just nourishing each other is part of a relationship and and it's we're connected you know when you within a relationship with someone we talk about this sadak pitta this emotional heart and the fine level of feeling it's about nourishing from that level as well encouraging supporting whatever that person's endeavors are and helping them as much as they can. So, and again, do not, that says, ma vid vishavahai, don't entertain negativity. You know, negativity everywhere in the media now, you know, in politics, in government, it's just negative. And it really does color your vision of the world. As I said that, you're like a frog in a world. Well, all you see is one aspect of life. And so negativity, entertaining that, is, is just not an option in any relationship. It has to be positive as best you can and, and have a world view, you know, a cosmic view of things. Well, that's him. And now you know why I married him. I, I absolutely agree. This, firstly, <coughs> uh, I married very, very late in life. And I proposed. I want to tell everyone, I proposed. Uh Uh-oh. I've never heard that part of your relationship. Well, there are many things, you know, you've got to get... I proposed and then gently encouraged my husband that I was proposing that he propose. It all went beautifully. Because, you see, there was no pushing or nagging. The thing is, is this that I love about my husband, and I will repeat, it's the humour. We both know... Because of the fact that we're both teachers of Transcendental Meditation, we have our daily practice, which helps address accumulated stresses and fatigues. With the Ayurveda knowledge, because we know one another so well, because we're Pitta predominant, what we do is we love and support one another, but we also give one another space. Space is an important thing. So we join together for the things that we do in our day, which bring joy. We have that laughter because we both have very dry senses of humour. And it's one of the major reasons. Maybe other people, whatever the gender, maybe they're looking for status or they're looking for money or they're looking for looks or whatever. You know, relationship and life is a magnificent, mighty marathon. And a sense of humour is something that what it does is it just takes the skin and the, 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 it, takes, it takes any sting out of life. It's like this beautiful lubricant or solvent which makes everything just slide and glide more easily. So I love the sense of humour. Working, walking in nature is everything for me. And I'm going to share an expression um, which Maharishi once said, and that was the fact that He believed in so often, this is all around the world, that so many of modern marriages and relationships begin in passion, but they end in ashes. He'd say a Vedic relationship begins with compatibility and ends in devotion. That does not mean there isn't passion, but passion isn't enough when you don't have those basic, those basic principles and guidelines in life and without being arrogant, having singly 
and together actively developing our personal development mentally and physically and spiritually and because more of that inner light and balance then again we're more flexible when things can get a little turbulent more supportive and again understanding the doshas is everything on a hot hot day where my husband is cleaning the car and I arrive just at the right time with a cooling drink. And at the same time, everything else about you, I adore you. Blue eyes. It's not just Frank Sinatra. I fell in love with his blue eyes. I can only say that I'm the luckiest girl in the world, but whatever it is, think about that compatibility that ends in devotion because it's a long life and passion isn't enough. It's great, but whatever it is, and that's all our relationships as well, insofar as a beautiful Vedic saying, Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is my family. And I'm, Mark and I, because we know tomorrow, Val, you're so clever, is uh, Valentine's Day, but we all know that every day should be Valentine's Day for our near and dearest and for everyone in our whole world family. And darling. <laughs> no, 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 no. Kissy, kissy. Well, that's embarrassing. No, it's good for you. Now he's got the lipstick mark. So all I can say is, is this. Life is as we are and more loving and healthy relationships for all of you. <coughs> Knowledge. Development of mind and heart is the king and the queen. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Thank you to both of you for being here and for sharing your insights. I, so much of it resonated. I feel like I got a little teary-eyed almost when the two of you were speaking about your relationship because it's very endearing. So thank you for sharing with us. Pleasure, Val. Okay, and thank you, everyone. Thank you everyone for tuning in for another webinar. We hope that you enjoyed this program. Please um, give us feedback. Let us know what other topics you would like to see us cover in the future. Thanks everyone for being here. Yeah.